will that it be universal. That's the test to determine the permissibility of one person. So, one more time. I'm asking whether I can act on this maximum, whether it's permissible for me to, ju just me, to adopt this maximum. And what I ask is, in order to determine whether it's permissible for me to act on this maximum, what I ask is, is it possible for everyone to act on this maximum? If the answer is yes, then this maximum is universalizable. It's possible for this maxim to make its end objectively good, and therefore I may act on it. If the answer is no, then it's not possible for everybody to act on it, then it's possible for its end to be made good by my acting on it, and therefore it's impermissible for me, even just me, to act on it. Okay, so is that clear? Okay, so. Why is this one impossible to will as a universal law? Should I say for the 19th time? It is possible for one individual to act on this. It is possible for an individual to make a false promise and maybe even achieve his end in doing so. But the test of permissibility is whether we can will that it be universal. And Kant's claim is that we can't will this to be universal. Why? Wouldn't the whole like concept of making promises just not exist anymore? Why not? Be anybody, everybody was always in the like the right if they could lie, then no one would ever like believe a promise that anyone ever made. Sure, made. and remember, the goal here isn't just to lie for the heck of it. What's the goal of this next? To get out of trouble. To get out of trouble. And so, if everybody, if everybody acted on the same maxim. Kant here is obviously assuming that everybody knows that everybody else is acting on it, remembers that everybody else is acting on it. So if this maxim were universal in that way, say again? No, like, promises just wouldn't exist because you could never trust anyone's promise then. That's true, and, and what's the problem with that? I mean, we can imagine such a world. Right? We can imagine a world where nobody believes anybody else's promises. But what? What's the problem with that? I mean, sorry, so let me just say, the problem is not that I wouldn't like that world. It's not whether I want to be in it. There has to be some kind of contradiction here. And what's the contradiction? Yeah, the reaction is self underwriting because in such a world you can achieve your goal because no one will be your That's problem. right. So the maxim itself specifies the goal of getting out of trouble. And if that maxim itself were universalized, it would conflict with itself. I wouldn't be able to achieve the end specified by that maxim if that maxim were universalized. So it's not like such a maxim. That was an out loud. I got it. Everyone just juggled over there. Ah, noise. Okay, so let me say again. When we think about what the world would be like if this maxim were universalized, the question is not whether we would like it or not. The question is whether there's a kind of conflict between what that world would be like and what the maxim is having us trying to do. That's the sense in which there's a contradiction. Um, I'm sorry. That's the sense in which there is a practical contradiction. A practical contradiction in the sense of, but well, practical is the sense of practical reason, doing something. There would be a conflict in what it is that we are willing. There's a conflict between willing that this maxim be a universal law, and willing on the basis of this maxim. One would interfere with the ability of the other one to accomplish its end. So a maxim 
is not permissible, a bad maxim, is an impermissible maxim, if it cannot be universalized. That means if it, there would be a kind of practical contradiction in willing it to be a universal law. So a practical contradiction means that uh, either the, well, either it cannot be willed as a universal law at all, or it would interfere, or willing it as a universal law would interfere with accomplishing the ends that are specified in that very maxim, or maybe some other rationally required end. So, so look, um, if I, suppose I have um, two different desires. I want to be in Albany, and I want to be in Los Angeles at the same time. Okay, well, um, willing both of those ends involves a practical contradiction. Because remember what willing is. Willing is making yourself the cause of some end. So making myself the cause of being in all just means that I'm not the cause of myself being in Los Angeles. They're incompatible. So willing one of those conflicts with willing the other. The claim is that when this maxim is universalized, willing that conflicts with willing the end specified in that very maxim. You can't do both at the same time. You can't do both in the sense that doing one conflicts with doing the other. There's a practical contradiction. Um, okay. Um, so, again, this is supposed to be the supreme principle of morality. Um, and I want to give you a few warnings about this. This is, the, I told you this is what Kant is going to call the categorical imperative. Um, this, um, sometimes, this universalizability um, sometimes is called the formula of universal law, for obvious reasons. Um, but Kant is going to argue that there are other formulations of the same requirement, other formulations of the same, he claims, same supreme principle of morality. Um, and um, he says they're equivalent. And even though he seems to sometimes favor this first universalizability test, um, he also thinks that some of these other formulations that are, in fact, equivalent may be more intuitively compelling, uh, closer to our common sense morality. And I think, in fact, that um, that's right, um, that other formulations um, are important. And I think, I think other formulations help complete or fill out this formula of universal law. Um, and actually, even though officially he likes this first formulation better, uh, in the metaphysics of morals, when he actually comes to describe what our duties are, he almost never uses it. He uses these other formulations. Um, I guess I, I didn't mention it. Um, Kant thinks that this idea of universalizability, this universalizability test, is something close to what we do when we ask, what if everybody did that? Right? So this is a sort of common sense thought of, of, of testing morality. What if everybody did that? Um, OK, second. Yeah. So is it like the what if everybody did that? Is the Problem that the world would be a bad place. No. Well, so you're talking specifically about the fact that so Kant gives a very specific spin to how to interpret that question. Right, so 
So I, I agree with you. Common sense and morality doesn't actually ask exactly this. It's the principle that the maxim would contradict itself if it were to That's what Kant, that's Kant's test, that's right. Um, I want to emphasize that this is not a principle of prudence. Kant is not claiming that you will be happier if you follow this requirement. He's not claiming that you will better satisfy your inclinations if you follow this requirement. Um, in fact, he concedes you might better satisfy your inclinations or some of them on occasion at least if you selectively violate this requirement. That just means that your subjective good is not objectively good. Happiness under those circumstances is not objectively good. Second, um, um, sorry, next point. Um, the reason why uh, this is binding is not because we've somehow promised to keep it. This is supposed to be a standard for evaluation of maxims that's implicit in the idea of rational willing already. Um, so it's a standard that we can derive just from the idea of a rational will, and it applies to us just because we have a rational will. So in this regard, I think you should um, think about a kind of analogy between this standard of practical reason and standards of theoretical reason. So in standards of theoretical reason, that is standards for the rationality of our beliefs, there are certain standards implicit in the very idea of having a belief, like the principle of non-contradiction, the principle of most poems. So the principle of non-contradiction says that if your beliefs contradict one another, there's something wrong there. And that's not because you promise not to contradict yourself or something like that. This is implicit in the very idea of having a belief or having a rational belief. Similarly, this test of the categorical imperative is supposed to be implicit in the very idea of rational will. Okay, um, I'll stop here. We'll definitely finish up uh, part one and get started with part two on the